Okay, so we're back and in this session, I am going to take you through the process of installing SAP Business One on your remote desktop server. And then we're going to go and we're going to install the Cloud Control Center and start the process of uh, configuring your environment so that you can uh, start hosting your SAP Business One on demand customers. So I'm logged on at the moment to my remote desktop server. So to install SAP Business One here, first thing I want to do is I want to map across to the default share which the SAP Business One server install has created for us. So to get to that, now all I need to do is go in here and I'll turn on my network discovery and file sharing. Just to make sure that's all working fine. And I will put slash slash SBO demo CL SQLA because that's the machine where we, if you'll recall, we installed our SAP Business One server. So if I press enter there, you'll see that that installation automatically created this share for us called B1 underscore SHR. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to map a network drive across to that. And I always like to map the S drive uh, because obviously that's S for uh, SAP. And then I'll say finish. And that's now done. And what you'll now see uh, is that I have in my computer now, I have my S drive here mapped across. So as you know, the process for installing any application on remote desktop services is if you go and you click on start, you go into your control panel, you will find an option, and I'll view these by small icon rather than by category. You'll see an, uh, an option here, which is to install an application on remote desktop server. So all I do is I click on there, and then it asks me to specify where is the file for the setup routine that I want to run. This is part of the reason why I like to map the S drive. So I go and I choose that drive. I then go here into client. And then I come down here and I choose setup.exe. Now, what this process does is it makes sure that it captures all the correct registry settings that are done at the user level. And then every time a new user logs on, it makes sure that in their copy of the registry, it grabs all the right files. And of course, it also does the installation for us in administration mode. So you can be sure that everything's going to run smoothly. Now, one thing you might want to do before this, if you've chosen to offer Microsoft Office, on your environment is you might also want to install your Microsoft Office, which will then enable you to run uh, things like Excel Reporter. I haven't done that, so I'm expecting during this installation that I am going to get a reminder message telling me that I have to um, I have to install Excel so that I can run Excel Reporter, but that's okay. So I'll choose setup.exe and then I'll say open. Yep, so that's the application that I want to install. So then I'll say next. And now my installation is going to kick off. It's determined that it needs the C++ SP1 to be installed. So I'll choose install. Let that prerequisite get, uh, get put into place for me. And now that's been installed. Our SAP Business One client installation is just going to kick off. The good thing about the SAP Business One client installation, it's fairly fairly much a hands-off kind of a process. It'll ask you, obviously, for a couple of pieces of information, which I'll need to provide, same as uh, you're familiar with now with all the other installation processes. So let's go and double check and see what we've got here. So I've got my C drive, which has only four gig available. Now, Remember, we don't want to go installing anything on our uh, C drives, on our system drives. And you may recall, if you've got a good enough memory, earlier on when we created this environment, when we created this virtual machine instance, I did allocate a data drive to it. So where's that data drive? Well, I haven't yet configured it. So let's go and do that right now. How do I do that? I go here into Start. 
and then I go into administrative tools and I go to computer management I go to my disk management and now you'll see here it is I have a 500 gigabyte disk that's currently unallocated and the default is that it appears to be offline so first thing I want to do is right click on here and set it online so then I'll go here and I'll right click again and I'll choose to initialize my disk and that's fine I'll just leave it as a master boot record and now that's done I can create a new simple volume and then I just run through the wizard so it's a new simple volume it's going to allocate drive E I'll say next and I can give it a name if I want to and I might call it data volume for the sake of the exercise and I'm going to perform a quick format I'll say next and finish give that a couple of seconds because I've selected it to be a quick format you'll now see that's ready so of course now when I look here I have my E drive so that's cool I will now go in here choose browse and I will change this to install on my E drive so then I'll say OK that's all great I'll choose next and next now the crystal report runtime is being installed for me then it will install the client the SDK components that SAP Business One needs uh, and that'll be pretty much it so we'll just let this run alright so now it's going to ask us where is our license server and again you'll recall we installed our um, our license server on our machine where our SQL server is BO demo CL SQL A and then I'll say next now this is not going to work why well I've left it like this for a specific reason just so I can explain to you this error message that the license server is unavailable the reason for that is because I have not opened up the, the appropriate ports on my firewall on this machine so let's just quickly go and do that right now so here it is here's our SBO demo CL SQL a if I now go and I open up my network and sharing center you'll see that I'm going to have to go in to the Windows firewall and I'm going to have to open up those ports so the ports that I want to make sure are open are going to be 30,000 and this the license server re always requires two ports so 30,000 and 30,001 I also want to make sure that my port 1433 is also open which is my SQL server port so let's go and we'll choose our Windows firewall and then what I want to do is I want to go in here into advanced settings so I want to create a new inbound rule so I go here into inbound rules and then I'll create a new rule and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this a rule to be based on the ports and then I'll say next and I'm going to put in my specific local ports so I've got 30 thousand then a comma 30 thousand and one and while I'm here I can also open port 1433 and don't forget I also am going to want to have uh, access to some of the components that are installed on my SQL server for my dashboards so I'm going to potentially need to open those ports as well but right now I'll just leave it at these and I can come back later and open up those ports <clears throat> so I'll allow the connection I'll say next which uh, where does this rule apply now I always like to leave all of these set because I know this is a tightly controlled environment um, so I, normally you just want to say only when it's a domain connection we don't want it when it's a private or a public connection but uh, these should never occur well certainly the public connection should never occur but occasionally you might end up with a little bit of a network connectivity challenge this is just something which sometimes happens with Windows so you know I tend to leave that as it is but if you really want to harden your system you should 
make sure you only leave it set to be um, active in a domain connection. Worst case scenario, just untick public, all right? And then it's domain and private connections. But right now I'm gonna leave all three, and then I'm gonna give this a name. So this is my SAP Business One Ports. And then give it a description, so you leave a trail for what you did. These ports are opened to allow connection through to the license server and SQL server. And what you might also then want to do um, is just to make sure you leave a trail, if you look at that rule again, you might just want to add uh, a line in here, added by Richard Duffy, and then your date, October 13, 2012. And just to make sure it's nice and neat and tidy, I'll make that a capital L, and that's it. So then I'll say apply, I'll say okay, that's now done. I can now minimize down my remote desktop connections through to my license server. And now this time, when I say next, what's gonna happen, you'll see the license server has been able to connect. Now if you, when you install your license server, decide to put it on different ports, then of course you'll just need to put the appropriate ports that you selected when you posted uh, or when you configured the license server. So we'll let the installation continue on. You can see it's writing the system registry values and this is what's being captured in this um, remote desktop server install mode so that these registry values can be created for each of your users who access the Business One client. All right, and here's that error message I was telling you uh, that we would expect that Excel is required but not installed. Of course, if I then want to use that, all I have to do on my remote desktop server is then go ahead and install Microsoft Office, which of course is a process that um, that you know also has to be done um, through this same method. So I'll say finish. Give that a couple of seconds to make sure it's complete and clean and tidy. Now, one of the things that I always like to do just to make sure everything has been captured by this installation process, is I like to make sure that I've run SAP Business One at least once successfully before I click on the Finish button. So if I double click on SAP Business One, what you're gonna notice here um, is that, that there is a bit of a problem when I go to run the system I'll just log on. You'll see here, it'll ask me for my license server. And I'll say OK. And you'll see I still haven't addressed this issue where I have not yet installed my license key uh, on my license server. But that's okay, that's not gonna bother me too much. So after my business one has run uh, successfully once, I can then exit out of here. I'm comfortable with that. And now I can select finish. So that's it, my SAP Business One is now installed on my remote desktop server. Now of course if you've got multiple remote desktop servers, you'll need to go through that process on each of your remote desktop servers. And if you're gonna load balance these servers, then you wanna make sure that your SAP Business One is installed in the same directory location, the same drive location on every single one of those servers so that you can set up that load balancing correctly. 
So that's my SAP Business One is now installed and we're now ready to go. As well as installing SAP Business One onto the remote desktop server, which from a cloud control center perspective, we refer to as our presentation server. The next thing I also have to do is I have to go and add SAP Business One as a web app. So in order to do that, I click here on my start menu. Then I need to go across here to administrative tools, go up to remote desktop services, and then go here and choose remote app manager. So any applications that I want to publish out just a pure application rather than a desktop, I'll want to go through the process of adding the, the application here uh, through the remote app manager. And you can see that this actually gives me a number of uh, different hints and tips uh, about things that I have to do to make sure that my remote apps will publish correctly. So let's do the first thing. Let's add our remote app program. So I'll click in here and say add remote app. I'll then say next. And then you'll see here is a list of all the remote apps that have, or all the applications that have been installed on this machine. And there's SAP Business One. So I just select it. I say next and finish. And that's now done. One of the other things I have to do is I have to tell the system which are my TS Web Access computers. So there is a local group on this machine called the TS Web Access Computers Group. And I have to basically add this particular computer into that group. So if I go in here, if I click on Start, go to Administrative Tools, I then go to Computer Management, I look at my local users and groups, and I've got a group here, you'll see a couple of things. I've got my TS Web Access computers, and this is where it's looking for the entries for this particular remote desktop server to be there so it can serve this application up onto this computer. So if I double click on that, you'll see that's empty. So what do I have to do? I have to add this computer to that list. I need to go in here in my object types and I need to make sure I add computers, otherwise it'll never find it. And then I put in here SBO demo CLRDS1. So that's this local computer. I say check names, it's underlined so it's correct. That's okay. I then say apply and I now say okay. I then also want to add myself or any of the uh, administrators who are going to access this system into the TS Web Access Administrators group. So I'm going to click here on Add, and I'm an administrator, so I'll say this is my username administrator. So I'll check the names, and that's fine, and that's done. So then I'll apply that as well, and that's now completed. Now if I go back here and I hit Refresh. What well, you'll now see, this now has a green tick against it, uh, so we know everything's okay. Next thing I want to do as well, is I'll want to allocate a digital signature against this. Now the purpose of allocating the digital signature, it improves my security. Now I haven't allocated a digital certificate yet against any of these systems. In order to do that, obviously I have to go out to an external certification authority and purchase the appropriate digital certificate. Now my recommendation is that you purchase a wildcard digital certificate. That wildcard digital certificate that can then be used with any machine that's sitting underneath that domain name. So right now my domain name here is sbodemocl.com. So I would go out and purchase a wildcard digital certificate for sbodemocl.com. Then I could use that for signing my remote desktop servers. I can use that for signing my, um, my applications. I can use that for, for securing my web server. So I would recommend that you go out and do that. I'm not gonna take you through the process of doing that. And that's something which I would expect you will know how to do yourself. Of course, if it's not, if it's something that, you've, uh, that, that you're not sure what to do, don't forget, of course, you can reach out to me and I will help uh, steer you in the right direction with that. But I'm gonna go and purchase that digital certificate 
and I'm going to do all the necessary things to bring that in and load it up on this particular local machine.